is a special episode of Sports for All. And usually my episodes are in the evening, but you know, we were flexible and we adjust, we adjust to, to our guests. And speaking of guests, this morning we have a special one. We have with us Leanne Barrett, who is New Zealand's first, first FIBA agent. So good morning, Lian. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Good morning from New Zealand. Okay, now let's let's get right to it. How you know I, I read I read your bio and how you got into this agent agent business. Could you walk us through how you got started? Sure. Um, so my, my son plays basketball and, and he played high school basketball uh, at St. Kentigan College here in Auckland. And a lot of his friends were ballers. Uh, you know how it is. Your teammates become your friends. And um, so originally I was just helping them out, uh, getting them into college in the States and uh, Philippines and different places um, as a mate or as a mate's mum. And everyone was saying, oh, you should you should do this and get paid to do it. So I, I basically Googled how do I become a, a, a basketball agent and found the FIBA page and studied my FIBA papers and uh, flew to Australia, paid the money and set my papers and passed the papers and became a FIBA agent in October 2019. Okay, and... How how has the experience been ever since 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 August uh, August sorry August twenty nineteen? So I had twenty seven players in Australia and New Zealand. I had some girls come over from US to Adelaide. Um, I had a few kids around the states um, in Europe. I had signed twenty seven players to teams when COVID hit in March last year. And every single one of them got sent home. So between October and March, I signed and placed 27 of my 32 players. So that wasn't great. Okay. How, and what are we, what is your, what is your agent style or management style managing these, these young men and making sure and guiding their careers? Uh, for, for the Kiwi guys, um, especially, I like them to have a job as well. Um, you can't play ball all day, every day, and train all day, every day. So I, um, you know, I've got a guy in Perth right now who's an accountant. He's actually stayed there during COVID and worked online, and he's remained with the same firm, and he's playing for the Mandora Magic. Um, and I've got a guy up in Darwin who's uh, doing a barber apprenticeship. So he's doing hair, cutting hair. And rather than have them sort of sitting around all day uh, and just training and playing, they are working. Um, I like, yeah, I had a couple of girls who were coaching, coaching school kids and um, training them and taking school teams. Um, they were from the States. Um, one girl was right out of Texas Tech, actually. She went into Adelaide and she was coaching and doing some nannying. All right, so you're you're also doing you're also guiding the careers of of athletes from other countries remotely from a distance. Yes, I am. Yep. So I work with players from all over the world. I've got uh, guys in Argentina, Israel. Uh, where was the last one? Uh, Bolivia. Bolivia, I think it was. Um, I work with players all over the world ex-NBA players, I work with some G League players, and I work with Kiwis, Aussies, doesn't matter where they are, all right. Germany. They're from all over the world, it's, it's like a uh, United, Nations, United Nations list of clients, Liam. Yes, it is. <laughs> and coaches, I work with coaches as well. So, um, yeah, quite often the coaches will contact me and say, who you got? I got a team. I'm in this country or that country. Who you got? Okay. And before the pandemic started, without going into details, were you talking to some other players or coaches? Were you 
were you working on some projects before the pandemic struck? I was. Um, so I was working with um, a couple of agents, MBA agents, um, to place some players into China. Um, they, the Chinese love the ex-MBA players or the guys that have played a few MBA games that have got a bit of a name and they pay lots of money for them. So we've put a, we've put a few into China, but, um, yeah, I, I like working with other agents that are more experienced than me. I learn from them and, um, yeah, they, they've been treating me really well. And, okay, how do you deal with the pressure of, of getting the contract signed, reviewing the contracts, creating the contracts, constructing the contracts? How do you deal with the pressure of, of all that and then having to submit that for review, let's say, the next day or the day after? Hmm. Okay, so the contracts are, um, you have a standard type FIBA contract, and then you can just add and remove things, you know, I like to make sure all my clients have got housing, uh, transport on the ground, Wi Fi, um, airfares there and back. Obviously, I've added uh, managed isolation quarantine costs into that now. Um, I think most agents would. And, um, you know, any little extras that they can get. Um, China, they do a lot of promotions. They get extra benefits if they win. They get, um, if you make playoffs, you get bonuses and just things like that. So trying to trying to get all those into contracts and um, then you work and negotiate with the other agent if you're working with another agent. And um, then you take it to the player and they'll, they might come back with something. I want my partner to be there or, you know, you just never know. There's all sorts of little variants that can be added into contracts. Um, and then it's negotiating with the clubs to make sure that they're happy with all that and um, obviously reaching a monthly price that um, the player feels they're worth and the club feels that the player's worth. All right. And, and let me create a scenario for you. What if, let's say, a little damage control here, your player says something on social media that he or she's not supposed to say and it, it magnifies and magnifies. How, how, do you, how will you deal with that? How do you deal with that? And has it, has it happened? It hasn't happened to me. Um, I'd stay in touch with coaches or club managers and speak about the player as often as I can um, on a regular basis about each player to make sure that they're performing. Um, you know, if you're an import into a team, you need to be the best player in that position. And if you're not performing, usually I don't have to ring the club, they'll ring me. And I need to speak to that player and say, you need to step up. You're not performing well enough. Step it up. Um, that's one of the not so nice sides of the job. Social media hasn't been an issue for me because at the moment, any player that's got a job is really happy <laughs> because there's so many without a job. So um, I talk to my clients a lot um, via, you know, Messenger and, and WhatsApp and that and just make sure that they're happy. Um, and because some, you know, they're so far away from home, COVID's going on, there was like unrest in America last year, um, and things like that scare people, frighten them. So, you know, I'm, I'm often talking to clients and, and just keeping them calm and making sure they're happy. But no, social media hasn't been a problem yet. Okay. And how do you deal with, let's say, because we know the the physical health of these athletes and they're in tip top shape, they're fit. How about the mental aspect of these athletes? Would you say that the past one or two years have been the most challenging for a, for an athlete or a professional athlete mentally? Mm. Gosh, yes. Um, I know whew, there's been a few clients that have been quite stressed by the COVID thing, um, being in strange countries where COVID has affected them quite differently. Um, you know, I, I've had clients that have had COVID and, and friends that have had COVID in colleges in America. The whole team's been locked down more than once, more than twice, um, you know, just to watch those college games on, on television. They're postponing them all the time last oh, this year because of um, because 
another team's had COVID or a player's had COVID. So, yeah, their mental health has been stretched to the absolute limit. And I think just kind words, reassurance, um, you know, reminding them of the standard, wear a mask, wash your hands, keep your distance, be safe, um, consider yourself because that's considering your teammates. So that would be how I handle it. Just speak with them, remind them that, you know, they've got other people to consider. It's not just about them sometimes. Well, have you dealt with a situation wherein one of your players doesn't want to get vaccinated and then the team wants them to get vaccinated? How do you, how do you deal with that? Have you dealt with such a problem? I haven't. Um, most people that I know that are traveling overseas are being vaccinated. Some people can't due to health reasons or religious reasons. And some people don't want to. Um, some people don't believe in COVID. And I think everyone's entitled to their thoughts, beliefs, and opinions. We can't go delving into other people's religions or, or thoughts or beliefs. So we just have to be a little careful with that. Um, everyone's, you know, it's the same thing. It's, it's like being tall or short. You either want the vaccine or you don't. Um, some teams won't take you if you don't have the vaccine. Some airlines won't take you if you're not vaccinated. So that needs to be a consideration. But for me, it's that's their choice. I can't tell them. I can advise them, but I can't tell them what to do in that situation. And what, as a, as a FIBA agent, what have you done to, yeah, growth, to, to accelerate or promote your, your growth as a FIBA agent? And are you still learning? Are you still studying, looking at videos, exchanging transfers of knowledge with other agents, mm -hmm. exchange of best practices and all that? Mm, yeah, I, I'm talking with other agents in other countries all the time. I'm the only FIBA agent in New Zealand. So it's it's a little lonely here. I'm sure there, there's going to be some others join me. Um, but yeah, I, I often share the knowledge with agents and coaches are really helpful. Um, you know, just enlightening me to the situation in their particular team, um, the type of environment that they run with in their squad. So it helps me know what players I have that I can fit in there. Because uh, team fit is very important. Yeah, looking, looking ahead, Leanne, down the road, are there any plans for you to branch out into other sports, not just basketball? I already have branched out into another sport. I also represent netball players. I see. Um, so I'm currently working with New Zealand, Australia, and the uh, English Vitality League in netball. So there are opportunities for netballers as well. As you would know, netball was derived from basketball. Okay. All right. So, so it's quite similar. Okay. Netball. Well, how about how about sports in other countries? Any plans of or have you already started that or negotiating with with athletes from other sports in other countries? I, I actually have been approached by football, uh, okay. soccer, football, um, people looking for footballers. Um, it's quite, it's a lot more complicated than netball and basketball. Their contracts mm -hmm. are amazingly complex. Um, so it's probably not something I want to get into, but I will stick with basketball and netball at the moment and see how that goes. The netball sort of, it's that time right now where we're doing some stuff, um, but that's not in my FIBA. That's nothing to do with FIBA. FIBA is only basketball. Okay. Are there any unique or different clauses that your players have asked for to be included in the contract? Because I remember when Michael Jordan was still playing in the NBA, he had a very unique clause in his contract, which, which was called for the love of the game, which means he can play anywhere at any time uh, that he wanted to. And he called it for the love of the game. Any unique clauses that your players that your players wanted in the contract that that sticks out to you? 
not really. I haven't had anything that wonderful, no. Um, we have had a situation with one of the China teams where um, Rolex watches were involved in MVP recipients. So if the player got an MVP award, they would get a Rolex watch, <laughs> which is nice. Um, but um, no, just the, you know, I want my partner to come. Can you at least pay their flights? Will the accommodation be okay for me and my partner or and my baby as well? And little things like that. But that's not uncommon. That's quite common. And well, back to... Back to the mental health aspect, Lee, and when are you affected when, you know, your players, uh, because you, you talk to them, I assume you talk to them on a often a daily basis or perhaps every other day, but is there, I think it's natural for agents to, when their players feel a bit of anxiety, let's say their kids have COVID or babies have COVID or someone in their family has COVID because it's, it, affects their, it affects their performance. Mm. Does, it, the, does it affect you as well? Well, I get to really like my players and get to know them as much as I can before I sign them to any contract. Um, I haven't had any experience with players, um, babies or partners getting COVID, but players getting COVID, yes, and being in isolation in strange countries and getting tested and so on, and being afraid, yes. And, um, yes, so I have talked with them through stuff like that, which is something you just can't even imagine um, having to do. I think I'm a mum of two boys. Um, when I say boys, they're 24 and 39 years old, so they're men. Um, so... My guy players, um, you know, I, 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 I can be a mum figure, that's okay. But most of them have got their own mums as well, don't forget. So that they talk with them as well. I'll talk to them um, on a more professional level and try to keep uh, a care, but try to keep the mum thing to that for their own mums to do and just speak to them about getting better, doing the right thing while they're in isolation, not taking any chances or risks, and, um, you know, just being safe. So there's a fine line between caring and becoming their mother, which I don't want to be. I want to be the agent, and, but I do care. Okay, so, so let's, say, let's say by next month or next week, there's no, no more COVID. Where, where do you yeah. travel? Where do you travel first? Which player do you see first? Which player do you call first or... What, what's the first thing you're going to do? I have an aunt in Palm Springs in uh, America, California. I'll go and see her first. And then I will drive right on through to Texas to my very good friends at Baylor University. And I will give every single one of them a hug for winning the champs. I'm so proud of them. I cried. They're my favorite team. I love Scotty Drew and Johnny and all the guys there. Um, shout out, Alvin. And I, I just love Baylor. I've been there a few times and I love that school. Um, but yeah, that's where I'd go. I'd go to Baylor. Okay, so since, since you're a FIBA agent, are there any restrictions? Can you only have am amateur agents and not players who are playing in the NBA? Uh, forgive my, my ignorance mm. on that, but are, is there a restriction? Yeah, I can't um, be an agent for a current NBA player, but I can work with their agents to get them work. Okay, so for example, you can you can recruit or sign up a player for that agent, and then get a commission. Is that how is that how it works for you? Um, so, if I know the player, just say the player's yes. name's John Brown. John mm -hmm. Brown is um, an NBA player or an ex-NBA player. His agent is an NBA agent. Um, and someone asks me, do you know John Brown? Can you get him for a job? I will speak with their agent first and foremost because that's what you do and um, split the commission. What are your, 
what are your non-negotiables when it comes to signing up a player? What are the what are the deal breakers, Leanne? Signing a player? When 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 let's say there's a player who, who wants to hire you as his or her agent, what are your non-negotiables? What what's what are the deal breakers for you? I like them to be good people. I want them to be in optimum fitness and shape. I want to see their videos. During COVID, most of my players sent me their daily workout videos, so I knew that they were keeping fit. <laughs> I was a bit of a taskmaster. Um, what is your workout video? What are you up to? Um, I want to, them to present to a team looking like professional basketball players, and they must read the um, illegal substance policies. I don't want any of my players caught out with uh, drugs, illegal substances. They must know what their medication contains. Um, and just represent yourself well. Hmm. When, when a player is unfortunately caught you know, with PEDs or, or drugs in his system and is suspended or banned, that reflects also on, the, on his or her agent, right? I think so. I really think so. I think, um, you know, if you're silly enough to break the um, policy and they were very, very strict on, on this policy um, and you're tested and you're positive, yeah, we're done. I'm not playing that game. I mean, not, I mean, not even drugs, Leanne. I mean, let's say they get into trouble with the law or, or oh. they do an or do you do any crazy stuff, that also reflects on the agent, right? The, the behavior of the player. I think so. I think so. That's why, you you know, you look at their character. I speak with them a lot. I, I correspond with players a lot, even before signing them. I ask previous coaches about them. Um, so I look at the team they've played them before. I look at the coach. I'll contact that coach and say, how was that guy? How did he play? What was he like as a team person? I'm not afraid to do that. Some of them don't want to tell you. Um, that's up to them. But a lot of people say, oh, yeah, he was great. Great team player. Um, so that's the sort of person I want, that you know you can talk to their previous coach or a teammate. Quite often a teammate will say he was a great teammate. And that's, that's you know, out of the mouths is the way personal references I've had players, um, mums and grandmothers ring me before they sign with me. So I'm speaking with their mums and their grandmothers. You know they're from a good family. <laughs> all right. Well, speaking of family, do you, do you also, any opportunities or chances, you, you get to talk to the families of these players and you know, to get to know them, even if it's on a professional level, level, you get to know them on a different, whole nother level. Yes. Yes, I like to. Um, again, trying to keep that line yes. between professional agent and mate or friend. Um, I've still got to be a professional agent. But, um, yeah, you know, their family is important to them, so they're important to me. My family is important to me. So I understand that, yeah, their family is vital in their lives. A lot of players are away from their families a lot, a lot. And they miss them dreadfully. So we really thank goodness for this sort of forum like Zoom and, and house party meetings and all that kind of stuff where they can be in constant contact. We've, uh, we've heard a lot of stories, Leanne, through the years. You've been, you've been around sports for co quite some time. I've been around sports as well. We've heard countless stories of professional athletes or student athletes or athletes who've, who've received substantial amount of salary or or payment and then they mess it all up or piss everything off how yep. how do you advise your 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 clients your your kids you know your kids your clients on how where to invest or how they should where they spend their money and things like that again to me that's the fine line um, i'm not their investment advisor um, a lot of them do that through their parents. They, they discuss that through their parents. A lot of them go into their own businesses. I know a couple of great Kiwi guys that are, uh, you know, started their own coaching clinics or their own um, 
basketball gyms and clinics and, and um, make their money through that uh, in the off season if they have one. But um, generally, that's their decision, not mine. I can't tell them what to do with their money. I can suggest that they'd be very careful because you just never know. One broken leg and you're out for a season, you know. Yes, yeah, yes. And you know, we're, we're in uh, the whole world is in the pandemic now, but as soon as this whole nightmare is over, the, the thing, things like platforms like Zoom or Google and Microsoft Teams, has this added a, another avenue for you to, to get in touch with your players? As soon as you know, the pandemic ends, will, will, will this also, will you make full use of this platform if let's say you can't travel to the certain country or can't can't see one of your players, mm. um, yeah. Well, we already do, um, but to me, mainly um, during the pandemic or the worst of it last year was reaching out to coaches and clubs and building my network through that aspect. Uh, now with the players um, overseas and so on, we just message. If we need a Zoom call with the coach or whatever, we, we do it. But it's it's so easy to keep in touch. There's no excuse anymore for not keeping in touch and letting me as your agent or your coach know what's going on. And we, learning from, as you know, there are athletes who, who have trouble or problems dealing with media and again, we go back to the mental aspect. We, we look at you know, Naomi Osaka and her you know, problems dealing with media after you know, you're, there, there's a lot of pressure performing at a high level and then you have to face the media after. Yeah. Do you also guide mm-hmm. your players on, on, how to, on how to deal with media, how to face media, especially let's say after a, a big loss, uh, a big lo- losing a series or or missing a shot to, to lose the game, things, uh, things of that nature? Mm, there's nothing worse. Big microphone shoved in your face straight after yes. missing a shot that could have won the game. Um, now, the, I think the key to that is be humble, be kind, and don't be hard on yourself. Don't show any emotion. Just speak frankly. Yes, I missed the shot. We lost the game. We're going to go back and look at that. The usual lines that people use. Uh, mental health is so important in this, especially in this time. And so they've got to look after themselves. Got to be so careful what you say that it's not misinterpreted. So I think there's some pretty standard lines that you use and then you say thank you and walk away. So how, okay, the right now you also have clients who are coaches, Leah? Yes. Okay, and coaches, coaches are, I assume, from all over the world, just like your players, right? Yes, yes. And yeah, I've got quite a few signed up and, and quite a few placed all over the place. And is there is there a distinction between because you you have players and coaches from different countries? Do you is there a distinction you notice between? the coaching style from different countries or continents and playing styles among players from different, from different countries. I've never seen a coach that I've met through FIBA coaching. So I can't tell you, Um, you know, I've got um, friends that are coaches all over the world. Some of them have been high profile coaches and some of them uh, haven't. Some of them have only worked with, female players some of them have never worked with female players um it's just the variety is as big as the player base so i i've never seen a, oh yes i have sorry one of the uh, xambl coaches i've seen him coach but apart from that no i don't really see the coaches in their styles i read their cvs i talk to the players that have played under them and then promote them through that through that avenue. And where do you see where do you see sports guiding the careers of athletes? Where do you see that evolving and going about 
from around five years from now, 10 years from now? How do you see that evolving? Oh, I just don't know what's going on with this COVID. Hopefully we'll be uh, pandemic free. Everyone will be able to move around the world safely again. And um, I think hopefully the players and coaches won't take anything for granted. A lot of um, people lost their jobs last year and were fumbling around looking for work and taking jobs that were beneath them just to be in work. And I applaud that because um, you, you, you've got to be in work to be seen, to be noticed by people, uh, coaches that have been unemployed for a while or players that haven't got footage for the last few years struggle to get work um, currently. So, yeah, keeping keep the job. Um, but I don't know, five years from now, oh, I hope everything's amazing again. And I, I've, I've spoken also to other, other agents, Leanne, and I'm not sure if, I'm not sure you can relate, relate, maybe you can, but some of them have told me that some of their players, especially those who are out of work, rely on their agents to find work for them. And is that, I don't know if you've experienced that. And if you have, mm. is there any pressure when, they tell you that they have I have to feed my family, I have to support, mm -hmm. I have to support my wife and child or wife and children. Mm. Yeah. So um, I've got a, quite a good example of a young fellow who's got a couple of daughters and uh, has been out of work for a couple of seasons. And I've said, just go and play and get some footage. I think he's playing in the ABA at the moment, which is um, the, you know, it's been a it's been a a good start for some people. They've gone on to bigger and better things. The footage is the most important thing. If a, if a coach can't see you playing or your last footage was 2016, they're not going to know what you're like now. So footage is so crucial. Present yourself, be in top shape, you know, recent footage in a uniform with referees, not your backyard shooting hoops yes. you know we we can't work with stuff like that so um yeah it's critical that you keep playing you keep playing it the best you can and you get good footage you now leanne while you were talking i remember there's another half filipino player who, who's playing in the new zealand nbl i don't know if you know him his name is kenneth tuffin I know Kenneth Tuffin, yes. Yes, he played he played college college ball here for about four years, three or four years. He's a very good shooter. So yes, yes, he had a, he had a great New Zealand season this year as yes, well. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with his new mullet. Yes, <laughs> so he played here for about three to four years. Yeah, amazing. And uh, which leads to my question. Um, so far, okay, you've, you've, has, has there, has there any player or have, do you have players who, who is with you wherein personality wise, I, not, not, not to say you don't get along with, but you're, you clash with them, but when it comes to, let's say when it comes to contract time and, you know, you, you get the job done and that's, that's where you, align where you, you guys get along but in terms of personality or values are there any of uh, do you have any such that type of situation with any of your players I, I actually did during COVID last year um, basically I said to my players I'm not going to send you anywhere unsafe for a wee while let's just let things settle down because everyone got sent home all the signed players um nowhere to go no playing no nothing they couldn't even go to the local park um so through my advertising another agent actually approached one of my players and offered them a position overseas and my player took that job behind my back and uh, went um, unfortunately it didn't work well for them due to covid as I knew it wouldn't, um, and I just released that player from his contract. I don't want any bad blood. I don't want any fighting or arguing or I told you so. I just said we're done. 
just got clean, huh? Yeah, I think that's the best way. If, if another agent's going to put your health at risk and your well-being at risk and you'd rather work with them than an agent who cares enough not to do that, that's on you. And somehow your reputation is also is, is, is put on the line uh, when, when, when players do that, right? Yeah, because I've had other agents contact me about him or clubs contact me offering him jobs and I'm just saying he's not my client anymore. Right. I don't think yeah. he has representation now. So. Have, you, have you had players who, who are playing in this league but they're underqualified for that league wherein, wherein they should be playing in a higher level league because they're playing in that lower level league because of COVID. you have any situation mm. with any of your players about that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Just about every player in New Zealand. <laughs> um, no, we do have we do have some good players here that could be playing at a lot better level. Um, some of them don't want to go overseas at this time. They'd rather not. Some of them are hoping for the AMBL, which is great league, great quality league um, and waiting on documents from some of those teams um, and some of them they're quite happy just playing over here uh, others just go off and do their own thing uh, you know we've got a, a guy Marcel here who just does his own thing he has coaches reaching out to him from overseas and he's been doing it for years he just goes and plays wherever he feels like it and he's done quite well being a good player that's his that's how he rolls so he's yeah He's doing okay. All right. Well, Leanne, we only have a few minutes left. And uh, is there anything you want to promote? Uh, I would, uh, you know, you're, I would like to ask for your final words before we, uh, before we, we end. And anything you want to promote? Anybody you want to say hi to? <laughs> well, I want to say hi to you and the Philippines, beautiful, beautiful country. Um, and I can't wait till the borders are all open and we can all travel freely again and um, not feel like the world's closed off to everybody. I want to say hi to all my family overseas, my aunt in La Quinta uh, in California, family in Melbourne and Sweden. Um, and in America, oh yes, of Colorado. So hey to all of them as well. And much love to you all. Well, last question, Ian, sorry, before we before we sign off. Any any Filipino players uh, who've uh, who've uh, seek you out or any Filipino players who've uh, come before you to hire you? And another question. Um, uh, no, sorry. That's my last question. Any any Filipino players who've uh, who've um, who've made feelers or tried to get in touch with you? No, I'm quite open to Filipino players. Um, so yeah, hit me up. <laughs> All right. Well, Leanne, thank you. Thank you for your time. I know you're very busy, and um, thank you for coming on to the program. And good morning. And please stay safe. And thank you for getting up early to do this for me. You're welcome. And before before we finally end, Leanne, can we can we have a photo for posterity? Sure. All right. On three. One, two, three. All right. Thank you, Leanne. <laughs> you have so a wonderful much. day. You too. You Bye. too. Take care. Bye.